Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Today, I'm gonna be talking about Christmas 2021, Nightingale's Christmas Carol. It was already known to be coming out, but now that it's actually coming out, I feel like talking about the event itself, the units and kind of the stuff around it. Um, I hope you like the video, if you do, make sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to me. It helps the helps me out a whole bunch, and I appreciate all the Fago people who do that, because it, I see that you guys do it, and I appreciate it, and thank you. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, this is the official site. There's not really much here. There's a prologue, which is Christmas is always a busy time for Caldea. Not only are there presents and cakes to prepare, but also a new Santa to be selected. This year's Santa, bringing gifts of good health to all, is also just the one to rein in the servants running wild at the race shift site. Christmas needs a Santa just as ill, <laughs> just as the ill need a nurse. And of course, a singularity requires you, Master. Merry Christmas. So she is the event's servant. She's an archer. Uh, and Estelfo is the summonable five. So let's talk about the event that's all for the website. So let's go into the event itself. So the first thing that I kind of have to bring up about it because it's extremely important, this is a lottery style event. Um, if you are new to Fate Grand Order, lotto events are basically God sense because they are the only events which you can grind EXP, you can grind Quartz, you can grind Ascension materials and you can uh, grind gems and or um, statues depending on which year of the lotto there's usually two lottos every year this year this the the one later on in the year in christmas usually has gems and in this lotto it's going to be very good because it has forbidden page which you need to buff a bunch of the units i think i can show you it right here how many units kind of use forbidden pages look at, this is just for one <laughs> This is just for one side of them. And the most important ones that use it are, of course, casters. Casters use a whole buttload of them. Merlin needs 55 to completely finish his skills. Castoria also needs 55. And these are two big support units uh, kind of dudes. 72 for Anastasia. If you're a big Anastasia fan, Da Vinci needs 72. My girl, Samsung, needs 72. Like... <laughs> 84 for Tabobo if you're looking to have a, a cheap alternative to when you don't pull Castoria. Your girl Tabobo is there for you. All things you kind of need to consider. Um, so it's very nice that you kind of have a grindable way. And this is basically a permanent grind. Because you can see here, this is the 10 boxes. The only difference is that on 11 boxes forward, it doesn't have silver and golden apples anymore. Um... So in the first kind of 10 boxes, you should always make sure to, you can always move on basically once you get like the big ticket item in there. But I would always suggest holding off until you get the golden apple and the silver apples out of it at least if you're trying to rush the event and stuff. Um, the reason being is that obviously the golden apples and the silver apples will help you a whole bunch in grinding and you need a lot of apples if you want to make the most kind of opportunity out of this. You also need to have a pretty decent um, grind setup uh, that can be a little bit hard to do if you're a brand new player I'm not gonna lie the Scotty system really doesn't work well with young players <laughs> because it requires so many skills to be mass leveled up that it's kind of not fair but there are some alternatives that you can use such as kind of using um, a berserker in a, a strong Berserker AoE with maybe Kaleidoscope. Eh, chance of, what are the chances of you hiding Kaleid? Point is, there are ways around it. And you can even do this a long way. Back in the old days before there was looping, I used to grind this kind of basically the old way. Arash on turn one, blow up the field, use AoE units and hope for the best on turns two and three. Occasionally use Buster Crits if needed. Um, so it's totally possible. But if you're a brand new player, this the just the pure amount of positives you will get with this is worth it to grind to get as much boxes as you can. You don't have to go crazy. Like I usually go for maybe around 100 boxes and I might get 100 boxes just because I need a lot of forbidden pages and dragon fangs and stuff like that. But my thing to you is always grind to your kind of Reginald, kind of how you feel comfortable in the game basically. If you feel comfortable doing 20, don't feel the pressure to keep going just because this is the best value. Only push yourself if you feel like it is something that you're down for. Because let me tell you, it is not fun. <laughs> it is an extremely boring grind. Uh, and I wish you the best if you go for it. But anyway, 
let's continue forward. That's something that needs to be said. Before anything else, I had to talk about it. So now let's talk about the actual summoning campaign. Let me show you how Stuffle so sober. Yeah, Stuffle, this is him sober. Uh, this is him as a saber. He is a single target quick. He has a quick, quick arts, arts buster build, which is extremely important to you for a reason you're about to see. But he has two quick cards, two arts cards, and one buster, which isn't too bad for a quick servant, but let's go on. So skill one is Casor de la Gesta. Destruction Declaration. Charges NP gauge every turn for three turns and removes on debuffs. 10% re uh, NP regen at level one and at level 10 is 20%. And later on it will get buffed. And so he changes two charges on NP gauge, charges on NP gauge every turn for three turns, removes on debuffs and gains crit stars. So the NP regen stays the same, but the NP he gains is 10% and 10 stars at level one. And at level 10, it's 20% and 20 stars. Not bad. It's a pretty decent upgrade if I would just say anything about it. When it comes to single target servants, getting crit stars in general is very good. Because <laughs> usually when you're using a single target servant, you're looking to kind of kill very quickly. So just kind of having your built-in like boom crit bomb is very nice. Next, second skill, the Black Luna Magic Fleet that calls Panic. Inflicts terror status for one time. Uh, three turns to all enemies. Chance to activate the debuff below every turn. When activated, 500% chance to stun them for one turn. Grant self evasion for three attacks, three turns. The activation chance at level 1 is 30%, and it's 40% at level 10. Not the greatest, but if you're fighting a boss, because again, most single target units are fighting bosses, if you can fight a boss that can be inflicted with terror and stunned, uh, it can really save your butt. Like, that's why um, Skahawk is so good. Because she has a guaranteed stun. But here you have at least three turns of 40% if you can get the debuff on them. Not every buff can be debuff. Not every boss can be debuffed, but if they can, you're pretty you're looking pretty solid if you can do it. Third skill, Majestic Triumphal Return. Increase on attack for three turns. Increase on crit star damage for three turns. Increase on crit star absorption of buster guards for three turns. Attack uh, attack up is 10% at level one. Crit damage 20% and buster absorption is 300% at level one. And at level 10, it is 20% uh, attack, 30% crit damage, and buster absorption, 500%. So, the big problem with this skill is that it's a crit star absorption to his buster cards. He has one buster card. This needs to be buffed. <laughs> to allow it to be... Maybe if they don't want to do arts, buster and quick, or I would just say in general, give them 500% crystal star absorption for three turns. Like, come on. This is kind of insane that they gave it to one buster card, but whatever. It could be buffed a little bit more. I think that's fair to say. I also think the attack up could be buffed and maybe get a little bit more crit damage in there. Next, his passive skill, our magic resistance A, writing A. Increases on quick performance by 10%. That's writing A, which is important. His Noble Phantasm is, uh, I cannot pronounce that, Fortuitous Abduction Net, but or Volcano Cagrerante. Nine hits, um, which is pretty good for quick, because more hits equals more chances of getting NP gain. Uh, NP level is one, its damage is 1,200. And its overcharge effect at 100% is 20% quick up for three turns. Um, did I also mention that it deals damage to one enemy and seals their NP for one turn? I don't remember, it's late. Anyway, at level 5 of his NP, if you got an NP level 5 of Stolfo Saber, it's 2000% damage, and also if you somehow get his charge to 500%, it is 40% uh, quick performance up, which is pretty nice, but you're never gonna get it, usually. Um, yeah, I think he's pretty solid. There's, uh, there's a decent amount of quick sabers. But I think in terms of ones that are super useful, I would say Sarah Selfo is pretty up there. I would probably still take Okita in some cages. In some cages, I would not put Okita in a cage, forgive me. Um, in some cases, because she kind of has a evade. To be fair, he also has an evade, and his evades are really good. I actually like this style of evade, the three attacks for three turns. Because there's always a chance that they don't attack you on turn one. And in that case, you kind of get to keep it. It's not as good as uh, Ku, Ku Collins, the Lancer version, but it's still pretty decent, I would say. Especially when it's cooldown is six turns. It's very good. Uh, 
But yeah, I think he's pretty solid. So if you're summoning for him, you are always going to summon for him because it's a Stealtho, he's wearing a bunny outfit, it's a Saber, and he's a 5-star. To be honest, I don't really need to even say anything because this Saber Stealtho could literally, his skill one could be make a pancake, eat pancake, get 200 HP. People would still summon because it's a Stealtho. <laughs> And I respect that, and I respect you. I'm going to be summoning for Astolfo a little bit. I don't really... I actually would really like a single target quick unit, but I don't think it's in my cards after getting Orion one multi in. So I'm still going to give my best chance at it. So yeah, my opinion is, is that he's pretty good. He still needs a little bit more buffs. I like that they buffed the first skill later on to make it pretty nice. But the third skill, that needs a full... That needs a big buff in my opinion. But that's my opinion on Stolfo. Feel free to leave yours down below. Tell me how you feel. Next, Nightingale is a 5-star. She occasionally gets featured. I don't think it's worth chasing her. I do think she has some pretty neat utility if you're someone who... Um, like, for example, if you have her and you're like, Oh man, I need a Buster unit. She actually does have a single target skill that gives 50% to Buster. Which is pretty nice. I used to use it back in the day to make Arash kill things in one turn. The big problem with her is that she is a medic unit that kind of heals the entire team and you want to keep her alive, but she's a berserker and berserkers in endgame content get one turn killed unless they have guts and unfortunately Nightingale is too old to have guts. Um, see she has like a lot of healing, she gets, oh she's also very good for against things that are like insta kill stuff whenever there's a challenge quest that has it, but you can see here she doesn't really have guts, which is actually very unfortunate, because you kind of need guts if you're a berserker. You badly need it, unfortunately. Just That's just the way they've made the game. Uh, next we have Ash, because I cannot pronounce his full name. Well, I'm going to try. Azvatham? Azvatman? It's Vatman. Okay, it's Batman. Um, he is story locked, so I liked him, but unfortunately I had to skip Arjun Alter's banner so i was not able to pull him so i look forward to pulling him trying to pull him here uh i think he looks cool and he also for certain people who yeah like look at that that's pretty awesome and for certain people who like a certain type of man he does things to them and i i approve of your choice in men if so so Obviously want him, he's story locked. Very hard to get story locked units, unless you, especially if they're four star. You usually have to wait around a ticket, but there's so many good four stars you could use that ticket on that it kind of, you know, makes it a little tough. Nursery Rhyme, I think is a, strangely, I think is a solid actual arts uh, caster unit. The only problem is that she doesn't really buff arts in any of her skills, she buffs crits. So Nursery Rhyme kind of wants to do like some weird crit loop stuff. It's She was designed before the, the Merlin was ever released or Castoria, so she needs, I think, a buff. But to be honest, she doesn't need a buff because I think she still does some pretty decent damage on her own. Like 50% crit damage to herself, increase her defense to make her super like tanky, increases her own NP gauge, recovers HP, and removes debuffs. She can tank pretty well as well, as I said, because of the thanks to this these last two skills. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I feel about Nursery Rhyme, but not really something you want to go chasing. <laughs> I think most people wouldn't, but hey, if you like Nursery Rhyme, Godspeed to you. And of course, these are the Banner SSRs, which I don't think many of, none of them are really stand out, but it's Maiden's Luncheon Party, Delivers of Wishes with my family. None of them are really all that good. This one has the closest to being good, but there are better cards that do this effect that um, when they enter the battlefield, you gain stars, and all of them are free to play. Unfortunately, you can't get most of them, so. You chances are have them before you have this dude, though, because you have to actually pull for this limited unit. Not limited unit, limited CE. I also like the art of this one, because it's uh, Skahawk and, not Skahawk, it's Scotty. Scotty Skahawk, the full name. And uh, Princess Maeve, looking the most granny-like. And wearing fucking Arcudes, is that how you pronounce her name? The lady from Melty Blood's outfit here in the background. <laughs> so, very cute CEs. And the free to play unit is an AoE Archer Servant that, from what I can remember, isn't too. like, outstanding. But she's really cool looking, and I think she has a lot of, like, 
cool animations, so that's good enough for me when it comes to a free-to-play unit. She's an AoE quick, so I'll definitely use her for this event where she kind of has a uh, bonus to damage and stuff like that. So very much appreciated. You should definitely get her because Christmas units for some reason are the hardest to get nowadays, especially when some of them get skipped and you don't get a second chance at getting them. Um, so my suggestion is, of course, especially since you're going to be doing Lotto anyway, and Lotto is, I think, the way you kind of get her, you should get her to max NP as close as you can. So yeah, that's kind of the the event itself. I don't want to spoil any of the actual fights in here. Do you know for the Santa Battle Royale, you are going to need to have a decent amount of um, total box reset counts. So something to kind of keep in mind. But I think it's actually specific Santa Battle Royale quests are unlocked when total box reset reaches a certain threshold. So I think that's based off of the number of players in the entire server, actually. So you don't have to worry that much about it. I will hard carry you, don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the event. It's coming on the 14th. Ooh, here's the free-to-play one. Oh, this free-to-play card, so the art for this is so good. Look at that. Look at my girl Quetz in the background. Look at that. Wonderful. I love to see all my Santa ladies together in one picture. You'd love to see it. Though I wish she would button up her shirt. <laughs> I wish she would at least do that for me. Um... Really cool. Oh, and here are the event command codes. I should have mentioned these, but I forgot. Maiden of Orleans heals the user by 1,000 HP when attacking with the engraved card. An existent phantasmal horse when engraved on a quick command card. Increase the card's crit damage by 20%. That's pretty nice. Angel's Bed removes one critical, <laughs> critical chance up from the attack target, then heals the user HP by 100. It's okay. Very situational, obviously. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the event. I look forward to it. I look forward to summoning. And I wish you all the best in your summons as well. So until next time, everyone, goodbye. Remember to leave a like and do all that other stuff. It helps a whole bunch. I know if you made it this far, you're very dedicated to hearing me out. So help your brother out <laughs> before Christmas. All right, that's enough fooling around. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Enjoy your day. Good night.